we've been looking at the modulus and arguments of a complex number, taking the Cartesian form of z equals a plus bi, and we're finding these two other values, r and theta. And they represent the distance of the complex number from the origin, and also its angle from the positive to the horizontal axis. That's polar form, distance and an angle. And if you look at this uh, diagram over here, uh, we can see the connection between the two. We've got a right angle triangle that effectively represents our uh, axis. If we were to think about that as being our imaginary and a real axis, we can say that A and B represent the real and imaginary parts of the complex number, the horizontal and vertical Cartesian coordinates. But also we can now say that R is the straight line distance from the origin to the number, the modulus, and the theta is the angle. We have a right angle triangle, so we can form relationships between A and B and R and theta. Because going back to right angled trigonometry, we can say that if we take, uh, for instance, um, we take uh, B and R, that's the, in terms of the the angle theta, that's opposite and hypotenuse. We could say that opposite and hypotenuse is the sine. So the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And if we multiply both sides by r, or take the dividing r to the other side to multiply, it becomes r sine theta equals b. So b, this vertical distance, represents r sine theta. There's a connection between our polar form and our Cartesian form. And if we look at, in the same way, uh, A and R, that's as far as the angle is concerned, that's the adjacent and hypotenuse. So we have cos theta, that's uh, adjacent and hypotenuse is a cosine ratio, which is A over R, which in a similar way gives us R cos theta equals A. Now, interestingly, we've already established that the complex number z can be written as a plus bi. And all we need to do is to say, well, we've got a different form of writing a. Oops, I'll bring it over here. a is the same as r cos theta. And b is the same as r sine theta, which means we can actually interchange those two expressions. So what we end up with is our complex number rewritten as r cos theta plus r sine theta i. That's a and b re replaced by these two new expressions. We can take a common factor of r, which gives us this form here. And this is the general form of a complex number in the polar form, where r is the modulus and theta is the argument. It's simply a way, another way of expressing how we get that position on the graph. Okay, so a couple of examples. This is actually an extra one from the notebook. If you're using the notebook, uh, it's only uh, exercise, example 11b that's here. So this is an extra one just to start us off. Express z equals root 3 plus root 3i in polar form. And this little thing here just means we want the argument to be between negative pi and pi, or un negative 180 and 180 degrees, as we've been discussing um, in the previous example. All the time, if you're working uh, or given a complex number in Cartesian form, draw an argand diagram, first of all. Just get used to drawing it. Root negative 3 um, plus 3i. Plus 3i, there's plus 3. Here's our um, complex number up here. It's in the second quadrant. Which means that we could say that the modulus is the square root of the two parts A and B squared and added. What are the two parts? Negative 3 squared and 3 squared. 
score of 18. And in terms of uh, thirds, that's splitting it back up into 9 times 2 would be 3 root 2. Okay, so that's our modulus. The argument, um, it's the inverse tan of B over A, which is the inverse tan of positive 3, that's the imaginary part, divided by negative 3. Now you probably can, can work out or deduce from the graph that again we're dealing in a 45 degree angle. It's negative 3 and positive 3. It's increasing with a, with a gradient of negative 1. So there's, it's 45 degrees. You could even estimate 90 and 45 is 135 degrees or the um, equivalent in radian. We can say, as always, our acute angle is the inverse tan of positive 1 which is 45 degrees, or we're working in radians here, pi over 4. We know it's the second quadrant angle. Confirmed by the fact that it's the tan of negative 1. Uh, inverse tan of negative 1, sorry. So our argument is the second quadrant, it's pi minus pi over 4. To get into the second quadrant, it's pi minus the acute angle, and therefore that gives me 4 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. That's our argument. Now, we don't have to think about a negative value for that because it's less than pi radians. We only think about the negative angle if it's in the third or fourth quadrant angle, which means that we can actually represent our original complex number was negative 3 plus 3i. And we're also going to write it then in this new form here, which is r time cos theta plus i sin theta. So we substitute in a value for r or the modulus of z, which is 3 times root 2 multiplied by cos of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4. And that is our new form of a complex number. Now, if you are unsure, if you do 3 root 2 multiplied by the cos of 3 pi over 4, you will get the value negative 3. And if you do 3 root 2 multiplied by the sine of 3 pi over 4, you will get positive 3. So it's really important to know that um, the two forms are absolutely equivalent. Okay? Just very quickly then, let's have a look at the second example here. So I'm just going to do it super quick because we've already been running for quite a while. We're going to do the complex number 2 minus 2 root 3. So there's negative 2 root 3 which means our complex number here is in the fourth quadrant. And what that means is that we can find our modulus, 2 squared plus negative 2 root 3 squared is 4 plus, watch these, negative 2 squared is 4 and root 3 squared is 3. So we end up with 16 square root of 16, which is 4, but the, the modulus is 4. And the argument is in the fourth quadrant. Now, if you've been uh, paying attention, what we really want to do is to think about this negative angle here. We already know that the argument is inverse tan of B over A, which is inverse tan of negative 2 root 3 over 2, which is the inverse tan of negative root 3. We know it's negative, uh, a negative value because it's the fourth quadrant. And we know that we can find our acute angle 
as we've always done with trig equations, by doing the inverse tan of positive root 3, what, tan of what is root 3? The tan of 60 degrees, or pi over 3. And the good news is that if our acute angle connected is pi over 3, then our negative angle is just going to be negative pi over 3. So I can say here that the argument is negative pi over 3. What that does mean is that when we write our complex number, we started off with, what did we start with? With 2 minus 2 root 3i. We can express it as r times cos theta plus i sine theta. Our modulus is 4. Now this time our argument is negative. And we have a nice little trick, um, which hopefully you can uh, understand here. I'll just explain it very quickly. When we're dealing with our, our quadrant diagram, and we're looking at all sine, tan, and cos, if we were to think of the cos of an angle going in a positive direction, okay, cos is positive here, and in this as it moves through beyond 90 degrees, the, the cos of the angle would become negative. If we think about the cos of an angle in the opposite direction, you'll notice that because the fourth quadrant angle is positive when it's cos, our, the cos of that angle is still going to be positive there. As we move into the, the negative angle into the third quadrant, because it's tan, is positive, effectively the cos of the angle will be negative. So the actual signs match up, no matter which way around it goes, positive or negative, it's first of all positive and then second of all negative. In other words, we can say that the cos of negative root 3 is actually the same as the cos of positive root 3. Okay? because the, we know that the signs will actually match up um, either way, whichever way we go. However, the opposite is true for sine. Let's get rid of these for a minute. If we think about the sine of an angle, it's positive here, and as we move here, the, the sine is also positive in the second quadrant. When we think about the angle going in the opposite direction, in the fourth quadrant, it's negative, and in the third quadrant, it's negative. So the, as we move round as a negative angle, the actual sign of the result is the opposite of what it should be if you're moving positive. So in other words, we can say here that the sign of negative pi over 3 is the negative of what it would be if it were positive. So in other words, we can make that positive sign into a negative and we can then just write minus i sine pi over 3. So the overall effect of having a negative argument is simply we can drop the negative signs from the angles and we make a little minus sign in the middle because it's the sine value that changes its sign and the cos values remain unchanged. There's a little summary just here at uh, that I can throw up. Just to you know, represent that, um, we can say that uh, the cos of negative theta is the same as cos theta. The sine of negative theta is the same as negative sine theta. And then we can basically represent the, the middle part of that complex number just by cos theta minus sine theta. So there's a little bit to think about, particularly when it comes to negative arguments, but it's worth a practice. Okay, go for it.